The fabulously wealthy and powerful Khmer Empire, also known as the Angkor Empire, was based out of the territory which is now modern-day Cambodia. The Khmer, correctly pronounced Khmer, or Khmer, or Khmer in English, are an ancient people whose culture became heavily Indianized in the region's prehistory. The land they inhabited lay at the midpoint of the maritime trade route between India and China. Over the centuries of contact with Indian merchants, both Hinduism and Buddhism became widespread throughout the whole of Southeast Asia and largely but not completely replaced the earlier shamanistic practices there. While Hinduism became the dominant religion of mainland Southeast Asia's ruling class, Buddhism generally became more popular with the common people. Additionally, Indian culture and language combined with the Khmer society, which developed into a unique cultural amalgamation. The first major state in the region was Funan, which was likely a loose confederation of city-states. Very little is known about the Funan, other than a few surviving inscriptions and a handful of mentions in Chinese records. According to the Chinese, one of the Funan's vassals was Chenla, a Khmer state. They overthrew the Funan and established themselves at the head of a new confederation of city-states. The Chenla Empire was prone to infighting and broke up into two competing factions the Chinese called the Land and the Water Chenla. Some modern scholars believe this is an overgeneralization and that the Chenla broke down into many more smaller factions that all competed and warred on each other. Whatever the case may be, the disunity among the Chenla, particularly the Water Chenla, made them easy prey. Pirates from the south took advantage of the situation and poured into the Mekong Delta, raiding, looting, and seizing control of cities. The two Thelesocratic imperial powers of the south, the Shailendra dynasty of Java and the Srivijaya of Sumatra, both sought to impose their control over the Chenla. During this same period, it is believed the Cham people of the central south coast of what is now Vietnam also raided and occupied former Chenla territory. It was during this chaotic time that a minor lord began uniting the squabbling Khmer principalities under his authority. This enabled him to drive out all of the foreign invaders. In the year 802, he was proclaimed a god king after an ancient Hindu ceremony was performed. Afterwards, all of the major and minor independent lords and chieftains fell in line and swore fealty to him. Although he was the first leader of a new empire, he took the name Jayavarman II. Jayavarman I had ruled more than a century beforehand and was the last ruler of the unified Chenla Empire. The name Jayavarman harkened back to a more prosperous and powerful time and the revival of past glory. Jayavarman II moved the capital city to a more defensible location in the north, further away from the open flatlands of the Mekong Delta. Jayavarman's successors expanded the kingdom to the north and west. They defeated and vassalized the predominantly Mon kingdoms of Lavo and Harapunchai after several campaigns. They also maintained hostile relations with the rapidly expanding Srivijayan Empire to their south. To combat the growing threat, the Khmer made an alliance with the Srivijayan's commercial competitor, the Chola dynasty of southern India. The Chola sent a massive fleet, which raided and plundered Srivijaya's major cities. After a peace treaty was negotiated, Srivijaya entered a long period of decline and infighting, which increased the Khmer Empire's commercial and political influence over the region. The Cham people of the Kingdom of Champa to the east were the empire's oldest foe, with whom they fought many wars, most of them being largely inconclusive. Usually Champa was victorious when they were invaded, and the Khmer were victorious when the Cham invaded them. There were a few exceptions when one side would plunder a major enemy city and carry off some loot, declaring victory afterwards, but little territory changed hands. In a rare example of the two cooperating, they collaborated with the Chinese Song Dynasty Empire to invade Dai Viet. After the Dai Viet defeated the Chinese, they changed their mind about the whole invasion thing and withdrew their forces. Their friendship was short-lived, and they soon resumed unsuccessfully invading each other. One of the remarkable aspects of the Khmer Empire is that from the early years of its formation as an empire, it was constantly plagued by palace intrigue, civil wars, and internal rebellions, many of them successful. But in despite of all the internal conflict, the empire appears to have been well run, its population grew rapidly, and the land was usually exceptionally prosperous. As the nobility played the Game of Thrones with each other, the ministers, scholars, and priestly bureaucracy actually ran the country. Consequently, their power, wealth, and influence steadily increased over the centuries. In the late 11th and early 12th century, the empire went into a short period of decline. 
As the nobility waged war on each other in the Cham as they liked to do, the western vassals stopped paying tribute. Surya Varman II got the nobility in line and reunited the empire. During his long reign, he launched multiple failed invasions of Diviet. He had successfully coerced the Champa into joining him on at least one of his invasions of Diviet. When they refused to join him on another invasion of Diviet, he invaded the Champa instead. And unlike the numerous invasions of his predecessors, this invasion was successful. He killed the Cham king, sacked the capital city, put his brother-in-law on the throne of Champa, and returned home to celebrate. The Cham immediately rebelled and executed his brother-in-law. He invaded Champa again, in a disastrous campaign where it is believed he died. Surya Varman II probably wanted to be remembered as the man who destroyed the Champa, but instead, he is known as the man who built Angkor Wat, the largest religious structure in the world, dedicated to the Hindu god Vishnu. Throughout the history of the empire, the plain of Angkor hosted no fewer than seven grand capital cities, each with a massive temple at the center. An intricately engineered network of canals used for irrigation and speedy travel connected all of these cities into one massive metropolitan zone. At its height, the combined super city is estimated to have had over one million inhabitants, making it the largest city in the world at the time. In the fascinating documentary, Angkor, Twilight of Civilizations, available on this video sponsor, Curiosity Stream, the details of Angkor's construction and its mysterious demise are examined. If you happen to be spending more time at home these days, a great way to invest your time is with CuriosityStream, a streaming service hosting thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles covering a wide variety of topics. The annual plan, which is less than $20 for a whole year of unlimited access, is really good value. So go to curiositystream.com forward slash epi. And for my viewers, enter the promo code epi during sign up to get 30 days membership for free. During the reign of Surya Varman II's successors, the country was plunged into civil war. This enabled the Champa to enact a revenge on their old foe. They defeated the Khmer and took their capital city of Angkor. Angkor was taken by a daring surprise attack. The Cham sailed a fleet up the Mekong River, across the Tonil Sap Lake, and up a smaller tributary river to the city. The empire appeared to be on the brink of a complete collapse. When Jayavarman VII united the squabbling Khmer factions and drove out the Cham, he later counterattacked and conquered the Cham, making them a vassal state for a time. During Jayavarman's reign, the empire drastically rebounded and experienced a short-lived golden age. His massive building program did not only include the typical temples and palaces, but over 100 hospitals were also built for the common people. Even though Jayavarman VII was a Buddhist, who widely promoted the religion throughout the empire, the Hindu priestly bureaucracy continued to increase their power. Receiving lavish gifts from the nobility, the Champa regained their independence shortly after Jayavarman's reign. In the west, the Thai, a people who had previously migrated from the north, overthrew the Lava of vassals of the Khmer and established their own kingdom of Sokutai. Shortly afterwards, a second hostile Thai state formed in the north, Lena. Three years later, in 1292, the Mongols invaded. After some moderate-scale border clashes, the Khmer decided to give them some gold, and they went away. In 1350, power in Sukutai was usurped by the powerful city of Ayutthaya. Its first king married the Khmer emperor's daughter, in the hopes of forming an alliance, which soon fell apart. Ayutthaya then launched a failed invasion of Angkor. The empire was too weak to hold on to the north. Consequently, the independent allied Lao Kingdom of Lanzang was established as a buffer against attacks from the north. Lan Zhang had better success in halting Thai expansion, and defeated them several times. During the last century of the Angkor Empire's existence, building projects ceased, and there are no surviving historical records from this period. The last two written mentions of their kingdom was in 1393, the Thai of Ayutthaya launched a successful campaign against the Khmer, and again in 1431. Sometime shortly afterwards, the city was abandoned and reclaimed by the jungle. Up until recently, it was thought that the Thai campaign of 1431 sacked the city, causing its abandonment. Archaeologists at the site have determined that there is no conclusive evidence of such an event having taken place. Increasingly, environmental factors such as widespread deforestation, soil erosion, and particularly severe monsoon seasons are believed to have likely played an influential if not dominant role in the abandonment of the city. The last Khmer Emperor was also the first king of Cambodia. 
He led a demoralized band of refugees from a once mighty capital city to begin building a new capital city, only to have it destroyed by floods three years after its construction began. Envoys were sent to the Chinese Ming Emperor requesting aid, but none was received. The Kingdom of Cambodia was a diminished remnant of its former self, but it survived. Its monarchy survived many invasions and occupations, until 1970, when the monarchy was overthrown by the military. A long, tragic, and violent period ensued, where a large portion of the country was slaughtered. After transitioning through many different governments, a constitutional monarchy was re-established in 1993. This has been Epimetheus. Thank you so much for watching.